Hey guys, Morgan here. Welcome to Season 1, Episode 1 of MDK Production School. This is going to be a series of tutorials focusing on music production as a whole, rather than just one aspect. So, they're not going to be sound design based, so if you're looking for how to sound like Skrillex or how to make a cool Zomboy patch, then you probably want to look elsewhere. There's a lot of guys already doing stuff like that, and they know a lot more than I do, so I'd recommend checking them out. One guy you could definitely look up is Seamless. He definitely knows his stuff. Highly recommended. So when I first started out, it was pretty daunting. You open up FL Studio, it looks like this. You have no idea what's going on. It was really hard to find consistent, informative tutorials. It's really hard to ask questions about the program as well because you don't really know what you're trying to ask. I found myself Googling things like, how do you make the blue thing go left and stuff like that. It didn't really make any sense and it took a long time. So that's kind of the goal with these tutorials. I want to take somebody who's a complete noob and doesn't understand anything about FL Studio or music production, have them watch all of these videos and at the end be pretty confident and have a solid understanding of what every feature in this program is. So without any further ado, let's get to it. So when you first open FL Studio, it looks something like this. We're going to first look at the step sequencer, which is this window right here. If you don't have that open, you can go up here to this button and click that to pop it open. Or you can also hit F6 on your keyboard, which is the hotkey for it. The step sequencer is where we have all of our different instruments. As you can see here, I can open up each sampler. Inside of each one, we have the actual sound itself, and we can just click here to play it. Inside the actual step sequencer, if you left click, it places a sample at that spot, and if you right click, it deletes it. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So we can make a pretty quick drum pattern just by doing a kick on every beat. You can see here it's outlined in gray and then red and then gray and then red. And those just mark the different beats in the measure. So since this is in 4-4, there's four different sections. So if we go up here and we hit play or just hit spacebar, that's how it sounds. We can also do some other fun stuff like add a clap on every second beat and maybe a hi-hat on every offbeat. So we'll hit play again. And that's how that sounds. So the step sequencer is great. It's where I do all of my drum programming, but when it comes to anything melodic, it's pretty limiting and it can be frustrating to try and work with it in here. So to get around that, you simply right click on the channel you want and choose send to piano roll. That brings us to this next screen, which is the FL Studio piano roll. This is probably where you're going to spend the majority of your time when you're using this program. So in the step sequencer, we had one note on each beat, and that's also reflected here inside the piano roll. If you look, you can see the same grid as you could see in a step sequencer. So if we scroll out a bit and hit play, watch the playhead, and it'll be the exact same as it was in the step sequencer. So it's the exact same, nothing's changed at all, it's just shown in MIDI notation rather than on the step sequencer. So what's so great about the piano roll? Well, quite simply, it's really easy to work with. You can change the pitch of your notes. So now it sounds like this. You can also change your grid settings and do more complex rhythms than you can actually achieve with the step sequencer. This is going to sound terrible, but it just gives you an example of what you can do. Obviously, that's a hit song. Okay, so you understand the step sequencer and you understand the piano roll. So how does FL kind of combine these two features and how do you turn that into a song? First thing that you want to do is just make a simple kick drum pattern. Four on the floor, that should do it. This is how it sounds once again. Now, go up to the top and click this leftmost button right here, or just press F5. Doing this opens up 
what is known as the playlist, and this is where the song really comes to life. So up until this point, we've just been working with patterns, but the playlist is where you combine all of those and turn them into a full song. So to do this, we choose our pattern up here. So we're gonna select pattern one because that's the only one we've made so far. And you just paste them in. We're gonna paste in eight bars of pattern one. However, if I hit play, it's still just playing back the single pattern. We're not playing back the entire song yet. So to change this, go up to the top of FL Studio to this little button right here. You'll notice the top one says pattern and the bottom one says song. Click the one that says song. When we go back to the playlist, you'll notice that this playhead has appeared and that's the sign that you're now in song mode. And when you press play, it's gonna play the entire duration of the song. For example, let's go back to the step sequencer and create a couple more patterns to spruce up our pretty boring song. The easiest way to do this is to click this little plus button at the top of the sequencer. Doing this brings up the name selection for the next pattern. Let's name it clap. So on clap, we're going to put the clap on every second beat. So on two and on four. Make a third pattern and name this closed hi-hat. And we're going to put this on every off beat. Finally, make a fourth pattern and name it offbeat snare. We're gonna put that right here on this one. Okay, so we've got our patterns made. Now let's turn them into an actual song. If you notice, pattern one is still named pattern one because we didn't actually rename it. So to fix this, click the little drop down arrow in the top left and choose rename slash color. And we'll just name that kick. You'll also notice that the track is just labeled track one, which is okay if you have a simple project, but you probably want to get into the habit of naming everything. When you have more complex projects, it gets really confusing really quick. The easiest way to do this is to hold shift and click on the track. That'll bring up the rename option and we'll just name this kick. Let's do the same with track two and we'll name it clap. Now go to your pattern clip selector again and choose the clap pattern paste that like this starting on the third bar shift click on track number three and we'll rename it closed hi-hat and then choose the same pattern from the top menu we'll paste this on bar five up until the end lastly we have our offbeat snare so we'll select that pattern and paste it on every second beat every second bar rather now that we have all those clips laid out, let's hit play and take a listen. Remember, make sure you're in song mode, otherwise you'll just hear the single pattern. Okay, so let's move away from the playlist for now and go back to this page of FL Studio. Go to the top and click on this button right here, or just press F9 on your keyboard. The mixer is where we can assign each of our instruments. We can take our kick, clap, hi-hat, or snare and assign each of them to one of these mixer strips. When we do that, we can apply cool effects like reverbs or delays or anything you want really, and just make our sounds sound really cool. I'm not gonna go into any great detail on that in this video though, because if you're just starting out, and if you're watching this video, you most probably are, it's gonna be really confusing and over your head. There'll be a future video in this season though that explains basically every aspect of this mixer. So if you wanna skip ahead and watch that, feel free to do so. Also, if you're confused about what track 67 is doing right now, that's just where I have my microphone input going to. So this audio that you can see is corresponding to my voice. So don't worry about that. Let's close the mixer for now and I'll just point out a few more things that are pretty important and pretty crucial when you're working in FL Studio. The first thing that you really want to pay attention to is the clock at the top. The clock has two different modes that it can show. It can show just a standard timer or it can show the beats and bars of your song. It counts up to four because the song is in 4-4. Four, four. 
If you switch the time signature, obviously it goes without saying, that would be different. If you click this button in the bottom left, it switches it to just a standard clock. So now when you hit play, it'll just display in minutes and seconds the total time of your song. And so on and so forth. The next thing to make note of that makes your life a lot easier is this pattern selector right here. If you click on it and drag up or down, you can choose different patterns. It's just kind of a quick way of doing things. If you right click on it, it shows you every pattern that you've made and you can just quickly select any of these patterns. Beside the pattern selector is the BPM controller. If you click on it and drag it up or down, it changes the BPM, which is the tempo or speed that FL Studio plays back your audio. So let's set it to 100 and now let's listen to the song. And now let's set it a lot quicker and we'll listen to it again. Over here in these boxes is where your RAM usage and your total CPU load are displayed. Right now, everything's really low, so there's not much to look at, but when you're working with a pretty CPU intensive project, it's a good idea to just keep an eye on this area, especially if your PC isn't quite up to par. If you start having weird audio glitches and stuff, you might wanna look up here. If you see anything weird or any CPU spikes, it's probably a pretty good sign that you need to free up some space in your project. The last thing to make note of is this button right here. It's especially important if you don't have a MIDI controller as it kind of serves as a temporary solution for that. If you turn it on, your normal typing keyboard can now be used as a MIDI controller and can play sounds. So turn it on and hit some keys on your keyboard. It's kind of awkward to work with, but if you're working on a laptop or you don't have access to an actual MIDI controller, it can be kind of useful. Just remember that when you have this activated, all of your hotkeys in FL Studio won't actually work anymore. All right, so that concludes this episode. There wasn't a lot of content in this, but I don't wanna overwhelm you guys with a lot of new information. Like I said, if you're just starting out, this can be pretty intimidating. But hey, if you still wanna learn more, feel free to click next and check out the next tutorial. Hey guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Don't forget, if you're interested in trying FL Studio for yourself, there's a link in the description to save 10% off all ImageLine software. When you're ready, click that next button, and I'll see you in the next lesson.